I loved the Ninja Turtles. It was like the first thing I was ever a fan of. Like I remember being four years old and wanting all of the toys. And I just, I remember those toys and how much love was put into their designs and the props and the package art and everything about it was like funny and weird and told a story and uh and i loved it so it's like i have such a nostalgia for it and then i love seth and evan's work i love their films it's so funny i love coming of age stories i love high school movies um it was a lot of when I heard that they were looking for a director for it, I was like, ah, that sounds like a dream project. I, I would kill to do that. Donatello has the youngest sounding voice of the four turtles, which people are very quick to point out online and after screenings and is my favorite thing uh, about him. Uh, it's because it, he's also kind of kind of savage kind of brutal like like ah, should we just maybe let this person die i don't know let's think about this logically and like that with that voice is very funny loves k-pop loves anime uh uh has a really high opinion of himself that uh, uh is totally unearned and uh just makes me love him more Raphael. Uh, he is, uh, he's uh, got anger issues, uh, should probably be in therapy. He's working through it. He's really sensitive. He doesn't like people knowing that, but I think like we, we wanted him to feel not just like arrogant and like sure of himself. We wanted him to be more like brooding and uh, uh he was just born bigger and stronger than the other turtles and he he carries that baggage uh uh with him and he he embraces it in some ways but i think he also it, he's like very self-aware and it causes him a lot of unease Michelangelo is the funny one. Uh, he's uh, like the he's a force of positivity for the group. Uh, he's like the the morale police keeps everybody uh, trying to think positive and uh, have a good attitude, uh, and everybody hates him for it. Leo is um, very insecure, and he tries really hard. Like, he is not as talented as the other turtles in any way. He's, he's never going to be as funny as Mikey. He's never going to be as smart as Donnie. He's never going to be as strong as Raph. But he will work harder than anyone. And he, his, his passion is what uh, he tries to make up for it with. With this, it was just, we eventually threw the script away and would just have them, like, I don't know, what's a funny thing? What would you actually want? What would you actually listen to on the radio? And the kids would just make up stuff and they would talk about things that they were passionate about and uh and the personalities and uh and we ended up writing to that like the personalities of the characters as you see them on screen came from that improvisation and from the chemistry they had with each other uh and it was so much we couldn't have written it there's no there's no way the bacon egg and cheese scene in the film is like uh, Seth described it as like, that's comedy that I would describe as unwritable. Like, uh, it only works because they just did it and they just went off on a riff together. It's the Ninja Turtles. <laughs> we, uh, these four uh, brothers, uh, uh, Leo, uh, Mikey, Donnie, and Raph, uh, uh, live in the sewer. They've lived in the sewer their, their entire lives. It's uh, dark. It's, it's scary. There's weird noises. It's wet. Their father is kind of overbearing and doesn't trust humans based on this trauma that happened to them in their childhood. And they, they've become teenagers and they are getting restless about, uh, about their life and they want more. And they see the human world and they're on the internet and they're familiar with human culture and they sneak out into the world and see movies and see things always from the shadows they just want to be normal uh and for them that's impossible because they're uh, uh kind of mutant turtle monsters is how they see themselves and uh through meeting their first human friend who they help out april o'neill 
uh, and seeing her not run away in terror, uh, they concoct a plan that maybe if they help enough people out, uh, if they help out the entire city in New York and stop this uh, criminal that's been terrorizing the city, that maybe everyone would accept them and embrace them and they could finally get what they wanted. So they, uh, they go on that journey and it, uh, it doesn't go as they expect. Jackie Chan plays Splinter and Jackie Chan is he, he is a living legend. He's like, he's an icon. Like he is, he has been a part of so many things that I love. He's known around the world. He's so good at what he does. He's so funny. He's so lovable. No one works harder than him. He's a tremendous actor. We love his films. We talked about the idea of like, would he be Splinter? That won't happen. And then we got him and he was so uh, delightful to work with. He's everything you've heard he's like hard working wants to do as many takes as possible wants to make sure he does a, a a good job really really gave a lot um and due to beijing time because we would record him remote we'd have to get up at like 6 a.m to record him which was always weird but uh like those were some of the best mornings on the, on the project he's he's so funny and adds so much to the character it's one of the most like essential teenage emotions and feelings and, and desires. It's this like desire to belong, to, to fit in, to be accepted, to be seen for who you are and known for that and, and loved for that. And it's really confusing as a teenager to navigate other people's emotions and feelings and the things they say and, and to understand um, just how, how you fit into the world. Um, and it's like, that became like, we're like, that feels like the most logical want and emotional hook for these teenage characters and their, and their friend April. And then it kind of just became uh, uh, a thing that kind of worked for everyone. Like Splinter is kind of lonely. It, it masquerades as hatred and, and contempt for humans, but you know, he wanted to be accepted. He wants to find a place in the world. He's a rat. He's one of the most hated things uh, on earth. We were like, Ice Cube would be amazing. He's so funny. He's such a good actor. He created gangster rap. He's, uh, he's like, uh, uh, he, he would be perfect. And we met with him. Uh, and uh, I think the moment we said, like, okay, the character's name is Superfly and he looks like this, Ice Cube kind of like laughed and smiled. And we're like, I think he's in. <laughs> I think <laughs> we think he's going to do it. We have uh, Paul Rudd as Mondo Gecko, who is so funny and likable, and like uh, the bromance between him and Mikey, there's chemistry and it's engaging and it's so funny. Uh, Natasha Dimitriou as uh, Wingnut, uh, uh, Rose Byrne as Leatherhead, uh, Seth uh, Rogen, obviously, and, and John Cena as Bebop and Rocksteady. Post Malone as Ray Filet, uh, who he was the nicest man and was it was such a fun record. Hannibal Burris as Genghis Frog, uh, which is also very funny. Maya Rudolph as Cynthia Utram, uh, the other villain, the real villain uh, in the story. Giancarlo Esposito as uh, Baxter Stockman. <laughs> It's a comedy. It's so fun to enjoy in a room filled with people and to just laugh in a crowd. Uh, and we put so much work <laughs> into the visuals, into the artwork. Uh, it really looks its best on a big screen. And uh, uh, I, I wouldn't want to miss the, the opportunity to, to see it play big. We put a lot of work into the sound too, like good sound. Um, uh, it's going to sound great, it's going to look great, 